And sometimes it can be a compassion to themselves as well. In other words, the person that committed the crime, that sometimes gives that, gives that person, and in fact, there's many stories of this, uh, the ability to redeem themselves and to change their ways and to repent. That happens. And that's one of the reasons that I do think that there should be at least some period of time that is significant between conviction and execution. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now, the bigger debate that I want to address here is when it comes to the death penalty itself, is the death penalty something that is justified? So I guess the first question to ask is, because this is often brought up when discussing this with Christians, is the death penalty something that is moral or is it something that the Bible would approve of? And for that, I think we have to go to Genesis 9-6, which is very early in the Bible. It takes place directly after the Noahic covenant, so after the flood of Noah. This is part of the speech that God gives to Noah, giving him some rules to live by. God speaking here, whoever sheds human blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made mankind. So, despite this being a short verse, there's a lot to unpack there. Because God not only grants an edict, he also, <coughs> excuse me, he doesn't only grant a rule or an edict here, he also gives an explanation as to why the thing that he is commanding is correct and good which is something that I like about the Bible, is that it very often does that. It doesn't just give you a whole bunch of arbitrary rules and tell you why this is bad and this is not. It does that occasionally, especially in the Law of Moses, but usually, especially on big moral questions, it gives you an explanation. It gives you a why. And so the rationale here is no person who has been given life by God has the right to take life from another person without a good reason, you know, self-defense, something like that. And that is because they are made in the image of God. And so you're made in the image of God. Other people made in the image of God. You don't have the right to take that life from them because that's something, that is a gift that God gave them. And you don't have the right to take it from them. That's why I said at the beginning of this, it is the most fundamental of all rights. And it is specifically because we're image bearers. In fact, I've said in debates many times, even though I can give you secular arguments, I can give you rationale without using the Bible, without using moral arguments for things like abortion, things like the death penalty, all of that is predicated on one biblical idea. And it is the idea that human life is intrinsically valuable. Where does that idea come from? It comes from the idea that we are all created by God, and because of that, that grants us an inherent value. That you can't get away from. Now, atheists would also agree that, well, at least most of them, I assume, would also agree that human life has some kind of intra uh, intrinsic value, but they don't have any good arguments for why. They can't really explain to you why a human life has value or should be considered inherently valuable without going to something from divine revelation. And so while I think that that's a good starting point, and because we all agree on that, we can build arguments on that basis, I'm just saying that the basis itself is something that originates from monotheistic thought. And so because of that, this is the same rationale that is given. You're not allowed to murder people because that it would be taking a life away that is also an image bearer of God. And you'll notice that it's interesting that when someone has shed that blood, their blood must also be shed. So he's saying that specifically humans, because again, if you look back at it, it says that by man, his blood shall be shed. So this isn't even a situation where you're supposed to just wait for God to sort it out. He says specifically that humans have a direction. They are told specifically and commanded by God. When someone sheds human blood, it is your responsibility to make sure his blood is shed proportionally. That is something that God actually advocates for. He's saying when someone has been proven to not be able to be trusted with their life because they have taken the life of another individual, it is your responsibility to take their life from them. And so we can debate back and forth on the merits of the death penalty. We can debate back and forth on how long a, a space we should have within the judicial system uh, between conviction and the execution to 
gives the courts time to find new evidence, which which has happened before. We can debate all of those things. But what is absolutely a non-starter is saying, well, the Bible and God would forbid the death penalty. Nope, that's not true. In fact, the Bible advocates for the exact opposite. Now, how we do it, that is another discussion in and of itself. And by the way, being somebody that is very libertarian-minded, I even understand the argument of, okay, well, in theory, the, the death penalty should be something that should be implemented. However, I do not trust the government because they don't have a great track record on this. I understand that argument. I'm sympathetic to it, and, and I can see where you're going with that. But you cannot make the argument that, well, the Bible very clearly would forbid that. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The Bible actually commands that there be some kind of reconciliation, or not reconciliation, that there should be some kind of uh, proportional punishment that is given to somebody that sheds innocent blood. And so that is something that the Bible actually talks about. But you notice there that not only does God give a rationale, but that rationale is that we are all created in his image. And because of that, we are supposed to uphold certain standards. And when somebody has harmed another image bearer, justice must be served in response to that. So put plainly, there really is just no biblical or moral justification for the death penalty to be completely outruled in all circumstances. Um, if you, on this particular case, think that because of his mental capacity or something like that, that he should be spared the death penalty. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that they made the right call here. However, I see your argument. I really do. I see where you're coming from. I don't think that it's in any way irrational to make that case. And so because of that, I, I'm very sympathetic to the, the idea that this one particular case may have been one where the death penalty should not have been evoked, even though I would side on, on the other side of that debate. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I'm not, because here's the thing, ultimately, if we're going to have the death penalty, especially as Christians, we do always have to keep in mind that it should not be something that is done out of vengeance or bloodlust. You know, being whipped up into an angry mob or a frenzy, that's an anti-Christian idea. And we don't want mob justice. That That's not good. That leads to things like lynchings, and, and nobody wants to go back to that. And so, because of that, the reason that I'm saying this is I'm not saying that we ought to make snap decisions or that this is something that should be done lightly. Christians, if they're going to support the death penalty, as I do, should do so sober-mindedly and very seriously. This is not something that we should just say, you know, well, the Bible gives permission for it, therefore we ought to do it, and if you think differently, you're an idiot. No, that's there's legitimate concerns here, is what I'm saying. But this should always be done remembering that this was an edict given by God out of compassion. You might say, well, executing someone is an act of compassion? Yes. Because you have to remember that when it comes to justice punishment, at least from the human perspective, it's different from God's perspective because he, he, he deals on a more spiritual level than we do. But strictly from a human physical perspective, punishment is not done for the person to learn their lesson. It's not done to reform them. It is done specifically to remove that person from society and make sure that they are incapable of doing the same thing to someone else. It is a compassion to other people whom they might hurt. And sometimes it can be a compassion to themselves as well. In other words, the person that committed the crime, that sometimes gives that, gives that person, and in fact, there's many stories of this, uh, the ability to redeem themselves and to change their ways and to repent. That happens. And that's one of the reasons that I do think that there should be at least some period of time that is significant between conviction and execution. But I do think that we have to remember also that ultimately when we do this as Christians, we have to come from it from an angle of compassion because ultimately that's what the thing is supposed to be in the first place. It's supposed to be done as a compassion to other people. It's not that you hate the person that committed the crime. It's that you love the other people whom they might hurt and could become their potential future victims. You have to say, nope, we, we can't trust that person. That person is clearly a danger to himself and other people, so we have to take that person out. Whether that's the death penalty or imprisonment for life, whatever it is, we understand that the punishment in the justice system is supposed to be done in a way not 
out of vengeance or out of, you know, wanting to see that person die, but ultimately because you're wanting to do the most good for the people in society around it. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?